Playing the guitar was like the first thing I remember I really wanted to do. I was mostly just played by myself. And it was kind of the thing that I would do to relax growing up. My dad was in bands when I was a kid, as early as I can remember. And I had a pot and pan drum set that he built me and I would get a set up on stage for some of their all ages shows and stuff. It was around like 16, the music started picking up. If you're working on something, you really have to focus on that one thing. Positioning of your fingers, the chords are gonna play, what the next chord is. Once you get the hang of that, just making it all sound good and together and musical takes a lot of your brain at once. I got into playing fingerstyle guitar mostly because I wasn't playing in bands. And that style of music really requires you to fill up a lot of space with not a lot of tools. Trying to play the melody and the percussion and the bass and all the elements of a song by yourself on one guitar. And it's really challenging. It really opens up a whole new, new world of, of music. I uh, was studying fingerstyle guitar and wanting to get better. And then some guys got in touch with me about a documentary that they were making about kind of the whole fingerstyle realm. They asked me to join up. We are going to shoot in Austria at this really cool guitar camp, the most picturesque location, and I was so excited to go on this trip. I ended up going to get a physical the day before I was supposed to leave for Austria to begin shooting. The next morning, he got a phone call saying, hey, you need to talk about your, your physical results right away. Can you come down and talk to us? and they told me I was diagnosed with leukemia. I had to call my family, my girlfriend, and uh, it was really hard. That was when it all kind of sunk in. I kind of held it together for the first part, but then um, once I heard them cry on the phone, that's when I lost it. It was really tough, but you know, it was kind of like, okay, well, let's figure out the plan. What's next? I ended up talking to the doctor. You know, I told him that I'd been working on this project for months. It was, meant a lot to me. And he was like, hey, if this is something that's important to you, um, you can go, if you're careful. Getting diagnosed with leukemia was probably the furthest thing from my mind. It was nice to be able to go to Austria. And I was able to kind of forget about it for 10 days, knowing uh, in the back of my mind that um, when we get back home, you know, the fight starts. About 2011, I started having some symptoms with fatigue and started noticing a couple other things like weight gain and loss that was dramatic and not having anything to do with my diet. Got diagnosed on my 28th birthday, then started treatment in January almost immediately. Just a really quick process, which is both good and bad. It's nice because you don't have too much time to get too overwhelmed with it because you just have to do it. But it also is a lot to line up in a very short period of time and get ready for just a total shift in, in what your life is like. A couple days after I got diagnosed, I was trying to think positive about the whole thing, right? Obviously, I've got cancer. I'm going to have to fight this for a while. But at least I'm going to have some free time to play guitar. I saw being sick as an opportunity with all the time I had to be home to be able to spend more time on music since it's hard when you're working a full-time job to really work the way you want to on your passions. I can't do the type of things physically that I used to, but I can work on music and I can work on guitar, or work on drum beats or any of that stuff or lyrics from home to still live an active life and, and do the stuff that's important to me. During my treatment, when I would get kind of down, I would start writing down the things that I knew I wanted to do once I was feeling better. You know, play a show with a band was on that list. Kind of near the end of my treatment when things were starting to shape up, a friend of mine that I had played music with says, hey man, when you're healthy, we should start playing again, you know? And I was like, yeah, that sounds great. Things just started taking off. We started practicing more regularly. 
We booked a couple shows and was able to play one of my first real shows in a venue in Seattle. And it was so cool because, first of all, I didn't expect to be out playing in a bar in Seattle after I had just finished the bulk of my cancer treatment. And all of a sudden, it's like, here I am on stage, you know, playing in front of my friends and my family. It was surreal, is what it was. You know, it had come so full circle like that. I started using the name The Good Wives around 2006. From there, just started thinking about doing it a little bit more seriously. And then about 2012 was when the band started. So you guys want to agree that our next cover is going to be uh, Here Comes Your Man? It just feels really good to play music with other people and to have fun for an hour or two every week and, and just let loose and play the songs and work on new material and write together. All right, let's just run through the album. musician and meet other people in the city that play and it's a pretty compassionate group. And when I got diagnosed, one of our friends was suggesting that uh, we do a benefit show. So the Crocodile Cafe donated the venue to us and uh, helped us raise a few thousand dollars for me to pay for all that initial scans and everything, all the deductibles that you just usually aren't prepared to at 28 to pay. It's always a surprising thing to see how other people feel about you in that type of a way. It's a cool experience just to know that you know you have support and all of that. It made it feel less like a, a city and more like you know a community. I don't think that a lot of places necessarily have that. I think that people tend to live their own lives, but here there's a lot of connection because everybody kind of plays music. Also, with being a musician in a city, like you know how hard it is, so you you know you have that empathy for other people that are trying to do something they care about. It was our first headline show, right? All my friends and family are there. We play the show, and it's awesome, having a great time. We've got that high coming off stage, you know. We're just excited. We just rocked it. I look over, and here is one of my nurses from Seattle Cancer Care Alliance. She had brought like five other nurses with her. I almost lost it, I almost broke down because I was like, I was, I remember I mentioned it to her when I was in uh, chemo treatment, I'm like, hey, I'm playing in a band now, we got a show, it's on Friday, and just mentioned it, and she f figured it out and came to the show. I can't even tell you how much it meant to me to know that they cared more than just, you know, the hospital room, it was just like, just floored me, absolutely floored me. The initial transfer to SCCA was actually pretty overwhelming because going from a hospital where I knew my oncologist and the other two that work in the building. And I know every single person on the nurse staff to SCCA where they have more patients than in the town that I grew up in has population. But I was able to quickly get in touch with different people that worked in the services and they were able to get things lined up for me so that I would have more stability, less on my plate to deal with and could just focus on treatment. AJ Gopal, my doctor, uh, he's great. Besides making sure that I have options and I'm taken care of, he's been really supportive of all of my music by being excited that I'm passionate about something and work on something and uh, sharing it with other people on staff. When I first started, I didn't think there'd be any way that I could manage to be in treatment for more than a year or two. And now I'm getting ready to be in year five, I think. So it helps a lot to have people that you know that like you can do this, that you can go through this many different treatment cycles. I was very serious about a lot of things. Uh, I wanted to be very planned out on what was happening to me and my future and my direction in life. Life has other plans. When I got diagnosed, it was like everything comes to a halt and to a screeching halt. So that was interesting as far as being a vulnerability standpoint. It's like, you know what, you can't plan anymore. You know, you're kind of handing yourself over to, to fate here, you know, and the hands of the doctors and the nurses that are, are going to take care of you and get better, and you just have to trust it. Without playing music, I just think that the frustrations of life would be a lot more difficult while dealing with illness as well. Having a creative release uh, it really allows for, for me to process so much more. It's really changed my perspective on how I go about thinking about the future. You know, maybe it's not so important to have everything planned out. 
or wise to stress about it maybe. And then it's okay to, you know, to be vulnerable sometimes. You can't fight these types of things alone. You can't go through life alone.